Hello, welcome to lab six. Um, in this lab, we're going to be dealing with uh, creating a virtual private network for our virtual machines. Um, hopefully, by the end of this, you'll get to a point where you don't need to be remembering uh, three different IP addresses in order to, you know, run the lab check. Um, so let's get into it. So one thing that we've sort of um, been um, not really talking about is the fact that when we're running these virtual machines we are um, bridging basically uh, the networking connections between things right so like if you notice I'm on C7 host and I'm still able to access the internet and this is because my internet connection is being bridged um, between my actual machine and the virtual machine um, so one of the first steps we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning this off and then recreating what we have with static IP addresses. Um, so let me get started by starting up the virtual machine manager. Now as soon as I get in here, um, I'm not going to be starting up any of my virtual machines over here. Okay, so what I'm actually going to be doing is going to edit connection details. I am going to go to virtual networks over here. I'm going to stop this from auto starting on boot and I'm also going to just stop this one. Okay, so let's do that. Um, but maybe I don't want to just delete this default just yet. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go over here, I'm going to add a new thing. Um, I'm going to name it Network1 just to stay consistent with what's in the lab notes here. I'm going to click on Forward. And in the next screen, I'm going to add a new network space over here. Um, so the one that we're going to be using is 192.168.235-0. Uh, okay. I'm going to disable DHCP4 and I'm going to move to the next screen. Uh, I'm not going to worry anything about DH, uh, I'm sorry, IPv6. Um, so IPv6 is something that uh, we will need to adopt in the future, but we keep sort of pushing as far into the future as we can because to implement this will take time and effort and businesses don't want to spend it yet um, so we're just gonna like leave this for another day okay so we get to the next thing here uh, we're going to be forwarding to a physical network and that should be NAT and it should be any physical device and as far as I know we should be good um, so let's click finish Okay, so now we have network one set up over here. We have default, the default over here. And again, I want to make sure that this is not auto starting on boot. And so one of the next things we'll be doing is making sure that each of our uh, VMs is going to be using network one. Okay, so now that we've got this set up and now that I've made sure to apply the changes over here to make it inactive and not start up on boot. Um, or like I said, we want to be using network one from now on. Um, what I'll do is exit out of this and we're going to start with CentOS one. Now um, let's open this, but we're not going to start it just yet. We're going to um, show the configuration settings for this one. And um, the one I'm going to be moving over is to NIC, the NIC basically. And um, what I'm going to be making sure is that we use uh, the network one for this. Okay. So let me just make sure that I've got this set up right. We're going to start with CentOS one. I'm going to go to view, go to NIC and make sure that this is set to network one NAT and we'll click apply to that. Okay, so we should have, have we should have this set and applied uh, for CentOS one, and we're just going to do the same things for each of our other virtual machines. We'll go to Nick over here. We will set this to be network one, 
hit apply, CentOS 3, open, and hit network 1, and hit apply. Okay, so as you know, probably from experience, um, anytime you're dealing with network configuration, um, this is one of the places where it's sometimes nicer to be working in a graphical user environment. Um, so we're going to be doing that with CentOS 1 since we have a graphical user environment we can be working with. Um, so one of the things I'm going to be doing over here is I'm going to be using ifconfig on C7 host. And I'm going to be making note of the virtual bridge IP address. So if you'll notice over here, the virtual bridge um, has a um, IP address of 192.168.235.1. So it probably should be the same thing for yours. Okay. Um, so let me get rid of this. Now we have CentOS 1 here, and I'm going to make sure that I've got console view. And we're going to start this one up. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we got CentOS up one up and you might have noticed when we started up we had a connection failed kind of message that is normal that's because we are messing with our situation now and um, we're let's let's go ahead and fix that eh? so I'm gonna log in okay so we'll wait for the um, We'll wait for our environment to show up. Okay, here we go. Um, and once again, it's telling us our connection has failed because we're setting something else up, and that's totally fine. Um, there's a couple ways that you can get to the next screen. Um, you can probably do it from over here, from wired settings, or you can also go to application settings, whatever. Um, so let's get into wired connection, and we want to hit the gear over here. Um, so let me click on that. And we're going to be working with IPv4, as I said before. Um, so DHCP is not something that we want to be working with now. We want to be um, setting a manual connection. Okay. There's a lot of reasons you might want to have static IP or manual connections for things. Um, with DHCP, um, it's not unheard of for your IP addresses to change. And you notice every time we run a check script, um, we're asking you for an IP address. So, well, wouldn't it be nice if that IP address wasn't going to change every time that you run stuff? Um, this is one situation. So, for example, at home, if I have my network, if I have something connected to the TV, maybe I always want that to have the same IP address so I can always go in there and change things and not have to worry about trying to figure out what that new IP address is in case something else connects and takes it up. Anyway, okay, so we've done this. We've changed from DHCP to manual. And we're going to enter the following information. Let's see, for our address, we're going to be using 192.168.235.11 uh, for our net mask, 255.255.255.0. And our gateway is going to be the same IP address that we saw when we were checking the virtual bridge on our C7 host. So let me go back to that, 192.168.235.1. Yours will probably be probably be the same, but you know, um, make sure that you are using what you actually see in your situation. Okay. So that should be that. Um, click on the DNS field and add the IP address. So that's going to be the same as what we have for our gateway. OK. And we don't have anything else that we need to be changing here, so that should be OK. Um, let's see. And I just want to make sure. OK, so we're going to be using this as primary, but uh, it seems like we'll leave automatic alone for now. Um, if I have to end up changing that, so be it. OK, so let's click Apply. And let's see if we can close this. All right, and let's move to a terminal on CentOS 1. Here we go. And let's do ifconfig. 
So what are we seeing here? Uh, let's move up here to see the our Ethernet zero um, machine. We have an INET assigned to us, and it's 192.168.235.11. And if we do a route-n, let's take a look. Yeah, we have a gateway, which is the same as what we set. And so now what we can do is probably try to um, check this connection. So what we're going to do is ping this from C7 host. So I'm going to go back over here. And let's see if we can ping 192.168.235.11. OK, so just an instruction on how to parse this. If you're seeing some some number over here for the time uh, that means that we have pinged this we're getting a response and this is giving the round trip time so 0 0.4 milliseconds is pretty good which is to be expected because we have two machines running on the same hardware um, so this means now that CentOS 1 is connected to our network okay so we're on to part three and uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is setting this up with CentOS 2 and 3. And you'll notice that these ones are command line interface only. So we have a little bit more work to do in order to get these up. There's a couple ways to do it, um, but let's get into it. So what I've done is um, I have already set these so that um, when we open this up, um, the network source is set to network one. So if you haven't done that already, please do so. Make sure that this is set to network one. Okay, uh, we can go back here and the first thing we're gonna be doing is starting up CentOS 3. Well, we'll start with three. Yeah, so let's go over here. We'll click this. And I'll see if uh, I drop any frames as I'm getting this thing started up. Um, let me close this. Okay, welcome back. So we should have CentOS 3 running now. Um, yep, so we've got back, we're back to our uh, screen over here. So I'm going to try to log in with the uh, correct uh, credentials so and the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm logged in as root so let me do that okay here we are um, so um, they're asking us to be setting this up using ifconfig we're gonna make sure we're gonna see if this is installed um, ifconfig is something that is deprecated at this point um, Everything seems to be moving to another um, another uh, utility that you've actually used already called IP. You know, so like IP address will give you the IP address. So it seems like we have ifconfig installed on this machine already. So that's great. Whatever, we'll just use this one. Um, if you do not have if if ifconfig um, gives you an error saying that is not available, um, you can install Net Tools. The instructions are there. If you really wanted to, you could learn the um, uh, the commands to be doing this with uh, the command IP. Um, either one is good. Uh, IP is probably something that we're using in the future, but um, just for the sake of this lab, we're going to be using ifconfig. Okay. So um, what we're going to be doing is entering these commands. So I'm going to use ifconfig. Now instead of just using ifconfig to display in to display the um, current configuration we can also use this to uh, you know uh, basically configure our system and one thing I want to point out um, since we have changed our network configuration from the outside um, you'll notice that we have no address here for INET um, so ifconfig is returning no address for INET it, we have something for INET 6 but let's ignore that for now um, so what that can tell you is that we are not connected to the internet. If I try to do a ping right now, uh, we're not going to get anything. Okay. So let's do ifconfig. Ifconfig. We're going to use eth0, 
which is the Ethernet connection, um, to specify what machine, uh, or sorry, what interface we're talking about, right? We're going to give it an IP address of 192.168.235-13 and net mask of 255.255.255.0, right? So it looks like CentOS 1 is going to be 11 and CentOS 3 is going to be 13. And you can imagine probably what CentOS 2 is going to be set to when we get to that. But uh, let's do this. Okay, we get no error messages or anything like that, so no news is good news. I'm going to use route add default gateway, and this is going to be the same address as a as our virtual bridge from before. Okay, and now I'm going to type in name server, and let's add that. Okay, so we get a message that name server is not found because I have not followed the instructions. What I should be doing is typing this into a file called resolve.conf. So, um, yes, it pays to read the instructions and follow them properly. So let's try that again. I'm going to type in name server and I'm going to give it 192.168.235.1. And uh, it's very nice of Vim to be giving me that visual prompt that I've typed this in properly. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit colon and X. So I have written something to resolve.conf. Um, so you'll, what you'll notice is that this is very similar um, to the process that we had to do in CentOS 1. The only difference being we don't have a graphical user interface. So we're just typing stuff into the machine directly. OK, so now the next thing that we see in our instructions is uh, that they're asking us to verify that these configuration settings have taken. Um, so we can use a combination of different um, basic uh, commands to take a look at what's going on. So let's start with ifconfig. Um, now that we've started, now that we look at ifconfig again, we should see an address for inet. And it should be the one that we've entered. So I see 192.168.235.13. That seems good. Now let's like, take a look at route-n. OK. With route-n, it seems to have a default gateway of 192.168.235-1. Okay, so now we start to see if we can see anything in the outside world. So let's try 192.168.235-11. So this is us trying to ping uh, CentOS 1. So let me just make sure that that's going to be up because I think right now it's paused. So let me resume that. And do we have this right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so our CentOS 1 is running again. Um, let's see if we can ping it. And we have success again. So if you see a number beside that uh, time message there, that means that, you know, pings are being sent, pings are being returned, and we're counting the number of milliseconds between those two things happening. Um, so what it seems like is that our CentOS 3 has been successfully connect connected to our network. Okay, great. We're done, right? Let's just uh, reboot CentOS 3 and, um, you know, be confident that all of our settings have been saved. Uh, so we'll go through the reboot process. Here we go. Waiting for CentOS 3 to come back. Waiting longer. Okay, there we go. So let's log in again. And uh, let's do the same thing as what we just did. Let's just try to ping our CentOS 1. And what you'll notice is nothing is persistent. So when you're typing in commands in ifconfig and setting up configuration options like that, all well and good. But as soon as you reboot your machine, uh, those settings are lost. Okay. 
So to make them persistent, what we're, what we're going to have to do is be what we're going to have to be doing is um, uh, writing to a configuration file. Okay. So the location for this is in our Etsy folder where you notice a lot of configuration files are found. Hint, hint. Etsy is a very important place. Uh, let's go to network scripts. Okay, so this is actually a directory. Sorry, let me read this better. This is config slash network scripts. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at what we got. Um, so we've got all these files over here. And you should see two different types of files, network configuration scripts and network configuration files. So we're looking for something called IFCFG Ethernet 0, which you noticed before that was the network card that we were actually um, trying to manipulate. Okay, um, so let's edit that file. Let's go, oh, let me make sure I'm in here. Okay, let's go Vim and we're going to do IF. CFG dash Ethernet zero. Okay, so we open this and we have a very, very short configuration file over here. Um, this is important that we keep consistent with uh, how we use quotations. Okay, um, so if you're using quotes, always use quotes. If you're not using quotes, don't use quotes in an inconsistent manner. Just, you know, be consistent with whatever you decide to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is be adding some lines to this, okay? Uh, edit the new file for your interface and give it the following settings or create a brand new file might be easier. Um, I'm just going to stick with this, right? So we've got device Ethernet 0. Uh, I'm going to add IPADDR. Notice there's no spaces in between what I'm putting here. And I'm going to choose to be consistent with quotes, so I'm just going to add that. Um, let's see, our net mask is going to be and our gateway is the same as before. Okay, and let's add DNS1. And once again, just, you know, just to clarify, this default gateway should be the same thing. It should be the same IP address as what we saw for our C7 host virtual bridge. So if yours was not 192.168.235.1, make sure that you're using the one that actually relates to your machine. Okay. So we've got DNS1. We've got, let's take a look at stuff. So boot proto. We do not want DHCP. We want this to be static. Okay. On boot, we want it to be yes. Okay. IPv6 init, we want this to be no. And what else do we have here? We have something called NM controlled, network manager controlled. We want this to be no. It shouldn't matter where we put this, um, so I'm just going to put it here. Eh, maybe not there. Put it here. So, nm controlled equals yes. Okay, now the one thing, the one wrinkle in this is that we want to be using uh, something for hardware address. So let me do that. Let's add HWADDR. And this is going to be unique for everybody 
Um, you know, I can't tell you what it's going to be for you. The idea with MAC addresses is that they are completely unique in the world, unlike IP addresses. Um, so let's talk about how to find that out. Okay, so to find out this hardware address, let me just add quotes here so I don't forget it later on. I'll add these and I'll make sure I got my cursor here. Um, so what we can do is maybe go over here to the hardware details to the light bulb and you'll notice that our the virtual NIC that we have actually has a MAC address already. Can we copy this? Maybe we can. Let's give that a shot. But you'll notice it's 525400E8A33D. So it's some sort of, you know, it's the number of hex bits that this is. So we can go over here. Uh, possibly if I hit Control Shift V, does that work? No, it doesn't. Oh, too bad. Can I Control C? No. Okay. So we're gonna have to do this the, you know, difficult way. So I'll have to remember five two five four zero zero. So five two. Oh, click inside five two dot five four dot zero zero colon. E eight A three three D E and my memory is so bad that let me just verify that E eight A three three D E eight A three three D okay good so this seems to be okay I'm gonna take one last look at things so we have the device of Let's see, Ethernet 0, yep. <clears throat> IP address is correct. Netmask is correct. Gateway is correct. DNS 1 is correct. Hardware address is in there. It's related to what we've got here. DNS 1, yep. On proto, I'm sorry, brute proto should be static. Um, on boot equals yes. IPv6 init is no. NM controlled is yes and I'm controlled is yes okay so let's save this now the moment of truth we're gonna see if we can um, bring down this network card and bring it back up and see if we can connect again to what we've got so let's do if down Ethernet zero so what this is going to do is turn off our network card successfully disconnected and we're going to bring it back up with IF up. Let's do this. Okay. Connection successfully activated. That seems like a good idea, um, or it seems like a good sign. So now what we'll do is verify the same way we did before. We'll start with IF config. IF config seems to give us an IP address of 192.68.235.13. That's a good sign. Let's try route-n. Route-n is giving us a default gateway. Okay, so maybe what we'll do is let's try to ping our other virtual machine, CentOS 1, right? So let's do that, and we seem to be successful. Okay, so, so far so good. What I will do now is reboot CentOS 3 and do the same test again. So what we want to do is now make sure that all of our settings are going to be successful every time that um, we start up the virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You should do it as well. Uh, do not proceed until you know that CentOS 3 is connecting successfully. Okay, so this is me after a reboot and all I've done is I'm pinging our CentOS 1 machine again. And as you can see, we're successful and it's all good. Um, another test that you can do just to make sure things are working is try to log on to the matrix server. If you can remember your credentials from ULI 101. Uh, so let me try this. Eric Brower at matrix.syndicate college. If you get this message, just say yes. Okay, asking me for a password. And we're in. Okay, 
So I can be fairly confident now that CentOS 3 has accepted the configuration um, and we should be good to go. So what I can do now is maybe what I'll do is just uh, shut this machine down. Uh, unless I need root privileges to do this. I... Oh yeah, sorry. I'm already I'm on matrix right now, so I definitely don't want to shut down the matrix server. So let me get out of there. Let me give that another go. Okay, so CentOS 3 is done. What you're going to be doing with CentOS 2 is exactly the same thing. The only difference is uh, for our IP address, we're going to be using .12 instead of .13. But you're changing the same file, you are running the same tests, and um, you're entering the same information. Um, so what I'll do, I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you the end result, but um, you know, basically, I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. So just make sure that you're substituting the one IP address, but the steps are the same. Okay, so welcome back. This is after CentOS 2, after going through the same steps. Um, as you can see, what I'm doing is making sure that I can connect to CentOS 1. Uh, and you can see it here running. This won't work, obviously, if the machine is down. Uh, but it's working since CentOS uh, 1 is up already. So that should do it for this part of the lab. So let's move on. Okay, so one of the things that we did during our setup was we were defining um, C7 host as being our DNS server. And um, the reason we're doing that is to basically sort of um, give ourselves a little bit of a tweak in terms of uh, something that makes things easy and user-friendly, um, which is us setting up some uh, names for our machines, right? So instead of memorizing these uh, IP addresses, we can just give it the, uh, the name that we prefer. Uh, this is part of what DNS does. Um, hopefully during your education, you're going to get a better idea of how the domain name system works. Um, as you know, we like to type in www.senecacollege.ca rather than I, the IP address that might be related to that location. Um, so what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be editing a file called etc slash hosts. We're going to be doing that for all of our all of our machines, okay? Uh, I'm just going to show you for C7 host, but you're going to be repeating these steps for basically CentOS 1, CentOS 2, and CentOS 3. The idea being, when we get to the end of this, we don't have to ping 192 blah blah blah. We can ping CentOS 1 and CentOS 2 and CentOS 3 and have it work. Okay, so let's do this now. I'm going to make sure that I am root for this. I'm following these steps in C7 host, but it's going to be the same for, you know, each other, every other machine. So let's go here to vim etc slash hosts, okay? And at the very bottom of this file, and I might even like leave a little space here for me, I'm going to do 192.168.23-1 C7 host. I'm going to do 192.168.235-11 for CentOS 1. Okay, maybe what I'll do here is do a YY and then go down here and hit P for paste. I'll do it again. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll just use R to replace this with 2 and use R to replace this with 3, and hit R to replace this with 3. Okay. So now that's done, I'm going to save this file. Okay. Oops, there we go. So let me just check something. I want to see if we should be able to do this immediately or not. So let's take a look. Let's try to ping. Uh, whatever we've got open right now. So what have we got running? We've got CentOS 1 running and CentOS 2 running. So let's try to ping 
CentOS 1. And it's successful. Great. Let's try CentOS 2. It too is successful, right? So this um, this change should take immediately and we shouldn't have to do anything else to make it persistent. So the next step I'm going to do is uh, start up CentOS 3, test it on CentOS 3, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Um, edit the hosts file for each of our each of these machines. Um, so once you do that, the end result should be that if you're logged in as CentOS 3, you can ping C7 host and have it work. Okay. Okay. So here I am. Here I am at the end of the process. Uh, this is me at C7 host. Uh, you can see that I'm pinging C7 host and I'm getting a connection back. So this is how it looks basically. Um, yeah, I have entered this in all of my machines now, and so now you know a little bit of a little bit of a comfortable thing. You know, you get to you can you can ping by just giving the name rather than the IP address. Now, if your host name is not one of the ones that it's supposed to be, uh, if it's reverted to localhost or something like that, you're gonna have a bad time. So what you'll need to be doing is changing your host name to be using CentOS 1, CentOS 2, and CentOS 3. Now is a good time to be making that change. Okay, so now we get into some of the stuff about um, how we can start doing network troubleshooting. Uh, this is a very, very common uh, thing that you have to do in professional and educational practice. Um, so it's good to get comfortable with it as soon as you can. Let's ping. So I'm in C7 host right now. Can I ping C CentOS 1? Yes, I can. Can I do 2? Yes, I can. Can I do 3? Yes, I can. Okay, so so far so good. If you're having any issue doing that kind of stuff, um, now's a good time to stop, retrace your steps, and see what went wrong. Um, so let me add the ARP command over here. And what ARP command is going to do is basically give you um, an overview. So I don't want to get too deep into how um, data communications and networking actually work. Uh, but the basic idea is when you're in a local area network like we are, um, an IP address or a host name is basically connected to a MAC address. And you can see here, so for example, let me expand this out little bit. So CentOS 1 is over here and has a hardware address connected to it. So this is the MAC address. This is how networking works before the internet gets involved, right? So this is only working on a local kind of network kind of situation. Um, this is not how you connect to Google, for example. This is only how it works in a very immediate kind of setting. Um, so this is the output that we get for ARP and the objective of ARP is basically to show us our local routing table. Okay, We can do something with ARP-N and what do we get different? I'll leave that up to you to figure out what the difference is. Um, should be fairly obvious if you've been following the steps so far. Okay, so the next thing we're going to type in is netstat.at. And when we get netstat, um, there's a lot of different settings and things for this. Um, but this is the output that we get. Um, this command right now is listing all active TCP ports. OK. So good to know. Um, so what we're going to do is maybe from, let's do CentOS 3. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to SSH into eBrower at, uh, let's say, CentOS 2. Yeah. Yes. OK, so from CentOS 3, I'm logged into CentOS 2. Uh, actually, what I think I should probably be doing is doing this with C7 host. So let me do that right now. Uh, yes. Okay, so there we go. Now if I go back over here to my C7 host window, we should see something that is slightly different here. 
So you'll see that um, I have from CentOS 3, I have a connection that's been established. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea about what Netstat is useful for. Um, we can see what ports are being connected on any sort of machine. And um, another thing we can do is add the N flag to this. And we'll get a slightly different um, output. And once again, you'll notice that the dash N is basically replacing our, um, uh, I guess, our, our names with uh, IP addresses. Now let's do one more thing. Um, it's asking us to investigate this uh, file over here called services. Um, now this is going to tell us what things are related to which uh, ports. So um, instead of just like, you know, catting this, let's do a thing where we grep for, let's say, um, well, the first thing we'll do is look for SSH, right? So what you'll see is SSH is associated with this port 22. That's very, very common, um, absolutely common. Um, that's the most, I think that's the default, so that's just basically how it works. SFTP, 115, let's take a look at HTTP. And we get a lot of output there. So if we go to the very top here, you know what, let's do this in a better way. Let's just do this. Head dash one, right? Oh, let's do head dash five maybe. Okay, and once again, what we see is HTTP is associated with port 80, which again is the default and to be expected. Um, so this gives you an idea about how things are working, right? Like um, if we have a port 80, that is often used for, you know, just internet traffic. Um, if you're using 22, that's most likely used for SSH traffic. It doesn't have to be. You can change that default, but uh, that's usually how it's set up out of the box. And the last thing we're going to do is look at netstat-au. And this is what we get. So they're going to ask you to sort of pay attention and what is the difference between this output and what we saw before. Okay, so uh, this is right up to about here. This was the beginning of um, getting familiar with some of the troubleshooting utilities that we have. Obviously this course we cannot cover all the intricacies of how uh, networking actually works. Um, we can only sort of show you the commands and start to show you the output that you will find useful. Um, part three, which I'm going to leave to you, is um, more bash scripting stuff. Uh, so now we're beginning to work with arrays, which is incredibly important with bash scripting and stuff like that. Um, once you're finished with that, time for a new backup, time to get your lab checked and um, you shouldn't have too many problems this one is fairly straightforward so great thanks for watching